Welcome to the locker room coming up on tonight's show. Barcelona set a new record at the weekend, but the criticism of Ernesto Valverde continues. We ask if it's fair. And the bandy-legged beauty Isco shot <laughs> at the weekend. We talk about his importance, but ask why Gareth Bale was left behind and PSG won the league on title. But is it enough for Unai Emery to keep his job? We welcome Ray Hudson back into the panel with us. <laughs> Barcelona setting a new league record this week, going 39 games unbeaten. But after their exit from the Champions League last week, a lot of the team's fans have been critical of Ernesto Valverde's style of play. Now, this is hardly breaking news because many of these fans have been critical of the coach's approach all season. Ray, you yourself had some concerns about Barcelona's style of play, not talking too much about Ernesto Valverde, but is no. this criticism of him fair? You know what? They're, they're, they're used to such scintillating football. Um, they're, they're used to a, a Barcelona team that always looks fresh and, and quick. And this year, they've been grinding out their wins in the Valverde way. Um, he hasn't rested some of the players. But you know what? I don't know if that's a denigration of him. And maybe it's a compliment to, because he looks at the board and he says, listen, I don't need to start all these expensive players. I'll do it my way. Okay, they've lost two games all season. One against Roma, which was a nightmare and the, the worst Barcelona performance I've ever seen. And one against uh, Espanyol in the, in, the, in the meaningless, really, Copa del Rey game in the first leg. They're, they're excuses in their own way because they're winning. But Gary... Barcelona, it's not just about winning. They have got yeah. to entertain I, and they've I, got to perform. I hear you, I hear you, right? But here's the thing they've scored more than Real Madrid. Yeah. So when people say they're not attacking, going, yeah, they are. They're scoring more. They're, they're defensively the best team in the league. So if they're the best team in attack, the best team in defence. What more did they said, want? Yeah, as Ray said, they've lost <laughs> one match really because Espanyol was home and away. So they've had one bad day, Roma. Yeah. And they could win this. They're currently 15 points clear of Real Madrid. They could win it without, without losing. They could do a double. And people that aren't happy with that, they're going to be crazy. This is a fantastic Steve team up. doing great things. Okay. The statistics, you're right 100%. But in Barcelona, it's not like Real Madrid. Barcelona, you got to play good. You got to play. They're playing good. They're no, winning no, 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 Gary, no, 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 no. Well, one well, doesn't good. mean nothing. One thing is Gary winning games. One thing is playing good. They're not playing good like they, normally we see them play. No. Okay. First well. thing, they've lost a game. Yes, the most important game of the season they lost against Roma, yeah. where he should have rested the players. I've been saying that for yeah. you yeah. Yeah. for so long. Of course, Sunday against Valencia, you're not going to rest no one. There's no nothing else to play for. Who are you going to rest? What for? But when you got a Champions League game, you got to rest the players. Yeah, one, one mistake, Valverde. One, one mistake. mistake what the hell? But that's how it is, Gary. One that's, mistake. You know what? Win the double. What's, more, what's you, more important, Champions League or Liga? Uh, uh, but they still win the double. No, 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 that is I'm, a good question. Now, what is more important? I'm, Why is the, the Champions, Champions League, League more important than my, 38 games? No one season. cares about the league. It's no one cares about the league. 20, 30 years ago, yes. Now everyone wants to win the Champions League. Mm. Juve's winning the seventh league. Uh, PSG is winning the nine leagues in eight years. No one cares. It's it, it, people want to win the Champions League. That's where their money well, that, is. You know there, what, Bob, several things. Before I can right. uh, Tommy, and then you can take it, Paul. I, I've never been convinced by this team that they could win the Champions League, and I think a lot of the Barcelona fan base saw this team as not being right, not being sharp and not being fresh. I watch Real Madrid team, I don't think there's a fresher, sharper, more dynamic team and look where they are in La Liga. So Tommy, Thomas, and, is it, it a case then of what he's doing with the players that he's got right now? Is he trying to build something and establish something with Barcelona or does he need to change his style of play? Yes. What he's Tommy building change. is an anti-Barcelona philosophy. I'm so unhappy and I agree with, with Ray, they've gotten away from what they were all about. And to see Messi having to play in his own half and play scared, basically, defend the lead in Roma with the same team, it's just incredible. But you know what? You get what you wish for because he's, he's pragmatic. He says, if it's a broke, I keep going. Real quick, PK, 50 games. Busquets, 51. Messi, 56. You know what? Ramos, 39. Casimiro, 41. Between Isco, Modric, and Asensio, 70. And he's a James. And by the way, Messi, as I said again, in Rakitic, there's an overload of injuries, an overload of mental fatigue as well with, with Messi. And, and Ray said from day one, I'm not so sure about this team. But and all of a sudden, a, we see that, you know. He's so been a victim as well, Thomas. I a think, victim of Valverde, the board. A victim of the board. A victim of a raft of bad signings that 
he doesn't completely trust. So he's sticking with what he was. A, an interesting point a friend told me, he says, around about January, mid-January, early February, somewhere around there, where Barcelona looked as if they had the league in control. There was a still a long, long way to go. But at that point, that's when you think he might have been able to start changing and massaging players into it. He didn't do it. He kept on feeling, and it, and it ran the t the, these players down, I believe, the for the big right. Champions League game. Absolutely. So first I know it's not easy. First okay, sure. The players that are there now, the, the starters, there's three, four starters that right. shouldn't be playing right. in the first 11 for Barcelona. Who's that? I'm not going to say names, but okay. there's a couple huh? that okay. shouldn't be playing. Like, okay. like we used to. Yeah, yes. okay. That's not the standard. The bench, okay, you've got Coutinho and Dembélé. You spent 300 million euro. Yeah. So when are they going to play? He yeah, killed the When are they going to play? But Man United have spent lots of money. But Man United don't know what success. they're doing, Man United. And, so, and so they here's get, here's get injured as well. Yeah, but here's the thing, Ken. Let's, let's just roll this forward four weeks' time. And Real Madrid have been knocked out of, of the uh, UCL by Bayern, which, which, which could, which could happen. Out. Then suddenly you're sitting with Real Madrid winning nothing and everyone's saying they're a great team. And Barcelona doing the double, going right. undefeated and everyone going, they're rubbish. Not at all. No. It's a fantastic but, achievement, the double. But there's a standard sure. in where they play. Are, are there, there, there is an aesthetic about Barcelona that has been just absent. And the fact that they are winning is admirable. But I think, you know, next year... Valverde, if he's given the chance, I think a lot depends on Real Madrid. Real Madrid has to lose the Champions League because then right. Gary's got and a big axe to in, grind. In, in, and I don't think Real Madrid will lose. But if they get the three, if they get right. the, the, okay, the third the consecutive one, Barcelona's going to go Barcelona's even worse. Since 2011, by the way, when they won the UCL, they've not won a UCL. And they spent $800 million on Cesc Fabregas, Song, uh, Vidal, Turan, Digne, uh, who else? Gomes, uh, Dembele, but which we still don't know, year. okay? Uh, but for a club like that, just winning the league and winning once in eight years in the UCL? No. no. Beating, no. beating Real Madrid and Atleti every year takes not, some not doing. Not last year, though. Anyway, Isco scored one and assisted the other in Real Madrid's 2 1 win against his old side, Malaga with no Luka Modric and no Cristiano, who stayed at home to rest. Bale did as well. We'll mention that in a minute. But Isco reiterated his importance to this team. And he is a very important member of this team, Gary. And, and can I suggest one thing, that he takes free kicks more often? <laughs> because, because Ronaldo's <laughs> record of scoring from free kicks is very, very poor. This guy takes a free kick. It's going to come up just now. It's an absolutely stunning uh, free kick. That's a good save early on but Isco bends the ball so much that for a goalkeeper Ray it's extremely difficult to make a save yeah we just this is the early days before he actually scores this his goal this is the Kovacic so. uh, set up it was a great save here we against. go here, here it is he yeah. bends this thing yeah it's phenomenal oh, but look at, for me as well look at this there, there's there's a real sportsman for his old club yeah didn't yeah. go crazy yeah. it was real gentlemanly and that really touched me but the you know what I think about him. I mean, he's well, just. Well, we heard what you think stupendous. about him on the call at the weekend. I'm yeah. surprised you've got your voice left. Yeah, no, he's just he's an artisan. Everything he does, and he's coming to his best at just the right time. Just like so yeah. many of the Real Madrid it, players, and that's that freshness coming out of them. Absolutely, interesting part is he started 19. Modric started 19. Asensio 18. Ben still at 20. So he's playing enough. So his the core group, he's still not part of the core group. His core group is eight or nine. And he comes in, and by the way, he gets substituted more than any other player. Yes, this was brilliant. Yes, the first time in a year he has an assist and a goal. But overall, his impact is still okay. Yeah, Zidane says he's playing him enough right now, so that's one to look at. But he did give him a lot of praise. Now, Zidane let a few men stay at home to rest, as mentioned. Why? Cristiano, Luka why. Modric, <laughs> Rafael Varane, and Gareth Bale. But in Bale case was it to rest like the others or was it to send a message to the I, Welsh I think maybe a message he doesn't need to rest he's been injured part of the season he needs to score goals here's the thing Bale hasn't scored against any of the top seven sides and I don't think Zidane trusts him to score against the big teams that's why he pulls him off against Juve is he can score him he scored against Alaves, Girona, Getafe but you need at Real Madrid you need players if, if they're going to cost you 100 million who come on like, like CR7 and score the big goals Gareth's not doing that, and I'm, I don't think he's a starter against yeah. Bayern. I think he I comes think this off the is bench. the big question about where he is going to be at the end of the season. He is the one, you know, is talked about in Anasia Nali coming. He's on his manager to beat him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, he, he, he may well be gone at the end of the season, but this is, I agree with Gary, this is the type of game he needed to start. He hasn't played en too enough this year, Gareth, and 
in the big Champions League games coming up and maybe the final and the Classico, you've got to sharpen that sword a little bit more. It was a mm -hmm. bit surprised leaving him at, at home. Interesting stat. Ronaldo doesn't play in seven games. Bale does. They win every game and have got a plus 26 goal differential. Not just in the last few weeks. So has he looked at what happened so, against Juventus with Bale on the pitch? Uh, that's... Okay, I think that's a telling story. If that's your big, one of your big guys, which Zidane talked about yesterday or last year in the BBC, and you take him off at halftime, you yeah. don't start him in this yeah. game, and, and the starters aren't there, you certainly send another strong message to, to Mr. Bale that probably isn't going to be there or is going to say, hey, I yeah. want out like James and Morata did. Right. Yeah. Story is that he wants to stay, so we'll be following this one. <laughs> we, we, we're going to go better than Real Madrid or Barcelona in the world. Yeah, we're well, going to go. Maybe we'll 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 it, it, it rains 370 days a year there. Bobo, come on, you want to play. You got 26 umbrellas in town, Bobo. You left AC Milan because you wanted to play. I was 32 years old, it's oh. different. I had to go to the World Cup. He's 28. What is it? What, what do you mean? That's what I mean. Did you leave Milan because you wanted to go to the World Cup and you had to play? Yes, but if I didn't, if I, if I didn't have the World Cup, I would have stayed in Milan. Uh, no, I, I, okay, I still well, right. San Siro now. We've got to move. Man City <laughs> and PSG both course. won their respective <laughs> league titles at the weekend. We discussed the definition of success when we return. Then get the cough, right? Ray, no <laughs> cough. That's right? a day cough. <laughs>And that's a good one, Bobo. That's when you stop, last that's when six, you stop sleeping. Last six, two wins, by the way. Uh, three draws and a loss. Only six goals scored and six against. Tired. Look at this. I mean, talk no, about heartbreak city. city. Look at this. this is a great Look at save. this. Heartbreak city. That's how it's close they were. I mean, come Pick on. Safe, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant, brilliant save. But here's the thing for Napoli, for me, is that they've got the fifth highest wage bill. And we're, uh, we're saying... We're in Italy. Yeah, in Italy. Fifth. Okay? And no one's uh, making Inter, money there, right? Inter, Roma, but they're all spending, Juve spending twice as much on a wage bill. And I'm looking at Napoli going, they've done fantastic. They're, you're right, oh, they don't have the squad to compete. But they've got their seven, what are they, 25 points clear of Milan, 17 points yeah, clear they're of Inter, they're, they're, they're and they're doing. spending more. I think that's a fantastic season. Dead right. And oh. not just that, Gary, backing it up, they still play the best football. No, they're amazing. I agree with you guys. Brilliant. Amazing. They're spending the right money, yeah. and they're second. That's fantastic. Right. But the thing is that they want to win the Scudetto. Uh, yeah, well... Yeah, not dead right yet. Right, right Good luck. thought he was, They're huh? not yeah. dead yet. Yeah. All right, not they, dead yet. Where there's life, there's hope. Oh, yeah, you, they did get the win, so now they're six points behind them. Anyway, Manchester City sealed the Premier League title at the on. weekend. So congratulations <laughs> to Pep Guardiola. <laughs> and Moving to on to the next story. For helping came. them along on that one. City <laughs> have been a standout side this campaign in the English top flight. Also, PSG, they sealed their title at the weekend with a 7-1 win over Monaco. But this question links into Man City too. I'll come to you, Christian, because you touched on this in the first segment. Have the achievements by the likes of Barca, City and PSG in their league campaigns been undermined well, by their exit in the Champions League? You've got, you got to speak in okay. English. Okay. <laughs> in why, why is a league title win not being given credit because you're not because in the Champions League anymore? Because one thing is anymore? PSG, they spend so much money in the French League and they're so much stronger than other teams. So they're going to win every year. Yeah, it's going to be one year like Monaco last year. They're not going to win <coughs> it. But me. out of 10 years, they're going to win nine years. Man City is different. They've, they've been winning more, all the cups, everything. But one thing is winning it in your league. One thing is winning the Champions League. Champions League, it's not, it's not that easy. I would, if I'm not Barca Real or, right. or Bayern, I wouldn't say we want to win the Champions League. No, no one else besides those three teams has the right to say we, we want to win the Champions League. 
You cannot say that. Okay. These three teams can say yeah. that. They're in the semi-finals every year. Of those two, okay, I, I would say City have done really well. Because to win in England, I mean, we've had f uh, four different winners in five years. So it's not easy. PSG are going to win every year. It's no, no big deal, them winning. So, but for City, they've won it, and they've won it in style, playing great football. Right. Well, and, and uh, he, has a prediction, he has a prediction, Thomas. Yeah. It's going to be Man City's next year as well. And it's going to be Man City's the year after. Everything oh, in this project okay. is just starting. This is the era of Manchester City. You watch. Correct. Well, but they need to improve maybe in two or three positions. But going back to Emery didn't win, by the way, league on his first year. It was last year. Monaco did. Yeah. Then he gets hammered by Barcelona. Then he gets his head handed again in the semis. There's no way this guy is going to stay. Tuchel is supposed to go there. Yeah. Conte yeah. maybe. No, Again, no, they've no, underperformed. No. They have Tuchel. underperformed for the money that yeah, they've Tuchel, spent. Tuchel will yeah. get it. To, just quickly talk about underperforming. Monica have offered to give all their traveling fans their money back. Well, that's yeah, brilliant. That, after being beat 7 That is fantastic. Oh, that is well yeah, well done, Monica. Nice well, absolutely. And still and, uh, well I will done, say as well, Zidane said he'd rather win the league title in the Champions League this Ooh. season, just a few weeks ago. He did say that. Ooh. Anyway. Nice. We've seen <laughs> league title wins and goals galore this past weekend, but there's one little superstar that's been making quite a statement of her own. Seven-year-old Ariana Dos Santos. Now, Ariana featured on NBC's popular TV show Little Big Shots with Steve Harvey, ah, where we learned that he is a huge that. fan <clears throat> of Neymar, so much so that whenever she sees her idol, it makes her cry. <laughs> she showed America a special little move she made, which she dedicated to Neymar, and the player kindly recorded her a video message. Wow. Look at this. She is following in her hero's fancy footsteps. Wow. That's a great strike, by the way. Stay alive. Anybody, exactly right. Anyway, it turns out that Ariana de Santos and her Boom. family are fans of B in sports, too. And one day, she's hoping Ray Hudson will be calling her goals live on television. So here is a special message recorded just for us. Hi everyone from Vienna Sports USA. My name is Addy and the Suns. Thank you so much for your support and I hope you get to show my goals live. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Superstar quality. Superstar quality. Keep watching this show because we're all going to stand up and do that little dance with Ariana. <laughs> yeah. Inspired by Ariana. Yes. Lovely stuff. And thank you so much to the Santos family for sending us those videos. <laughs> Top goals when we return. Ray Hudson was adamant about his pick this week. Find out what it is when we come back. Okay, it's time for our top goals right now. We saw some belters at the weekend, so let's get started without further ado with a man who scored three consecutive braces. Check the abate, Thomas. Woo! And by the way, seven goals in six starts only. Ten shots a goal, scores. Woo! Look at the back heel. The Abati, that, that's almost 100% oh, accuracy. What a good chip and all, Is man. it a chip? Is it a, a oh, scoop? Is it a. Beautiful. What is it? Okay, Murray had a good name for it on Sunday. A rinky dink. A rinky dink. Damian Suarez for you, Ray Hudson. Absolutely. And watch this lad on the ball. This is part of the, He just steps back, takes a look, and then Damian, look, it's all, it's all, this is all a ploy, and then he strikes through it from that oh, distance. Wow. For me, that is arguably up for four goal of this season. Wow. wow. That is a superlative right. hit from the oh. Uruguayan, Charlois. Wow. Gary Bailey, Stephen Enzonzi. Oh, here's another long one from way, way out. I'm not quite sure if it's as good as Ray's, but uh, this is a decent it's strike. A great strike, Gary. About 32, 33 metres out. Nobody like defending in midfield, mind you. They gave Enzonzi all the time in the world. I don't like this one. <laughs> Christian's not happy with that one. He is with this one, though. Ancel I said the whole Maria. weekend at home, trying to choose, <laughs> trying to find a good goal. Here it is. Great ball from Cavani. Gives hey, it to Di Maria. Hey, hey, nice. And there goes a little chip. Chips galore. The whole Sunday Scoop. and Saturday at home oh, trying to choose his goal. He's been really magic, that. About it, he has, <laughs> the noodle. Finally, he came to this decision. Mine is Mariano in the Galatasaray, the Shakshahi again. Wow, that's a goal. Call that game, Murray. Call that game, Murray. Call that game, Murray. That's fantastic. Call it. And he's a right back. 
Yes. Yeah. Should, be he should be playing up front, this guy. Wow. Great, great strike. Right okay. back with good we've, we've given great Gary strike. Bailey too easy a ride no, today. No, no, no. You're not so we just want you. to talk a little bit about Manchester United and Jose Mourinho. Hey. Many fans wondering whether he's the right man for the job there. I still, th I still think he is. I mean, hopefully we finish second. We're in an FA Cup semi-final this weekend, and we've got to the knockout phases of Ooh. European Champions oh, League, good. which, which wow. is good. It's good compared to what Van Gaal did. You're all oh, okay, countrymen yeah. there. Funny. So we're improving. Van Gaal won an FA Cup. Still, and didn't spend too way, much way money short. on no, the he team did, either, did Gary. He spent a wee bit. He <laughs> yeah. didn't spend too uh, much money on We're heading in the right direction. That is beautiful football, Rock. It's problem great it to watch. The problem we have is that Manchester football. City are playing so well that everything. But we're the second best team. And we didn't want them to win at home, so you know we just threw it away against the West The best Brom. half of the year was the second <laughs> half against City. When the players decided yeah. they were going to play, not well, Mo, me, by the way. I'm going to be sticking a knife in your back here, Pat. Right. So you shut up, because how did your... Ajax do. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. And you, oh, as well, you, Italia Italiano, Italiano you, you had every club in Italy, so Great. you must have been... Wait, was been 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 but <laughs> Newcastle United... Uh, that's where it's leading to. That's where it's leading to. Hey. Middle, middle no, what, of the table. What happened with Newcastle United? <laughs> we got a win. Two, two one, baby. And, and against Arsenal, Phil Shane's team. And Yetlin. Uh, two one. Yetlin. Yeah. The Americans. Yeah, yeah. Ray, actually, Ray took the time during his call on the Malaga Real Madrid game to troll... All his fellow colleagues yeah. at the in sports. <laughs> Losers! Except for me, because yeah. Middlesbrough won at the weekend and Smuggies. they're back in the playoff spot. So yeah. that happened there. As Latan continues to impress here in America, mm. are you happy to see him here, Christian Vieri? I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I think it's good for MLS. Yeah. Him yeah. and Jovinko are the two best players that have ever yeah. come to the MLS. Fabulous. Should have gone to the World Cup. Quality. Sweden? It was dependable. Uh, it was guaranteed. You get that yeah. type of class. No matter about how old he is, it doesn't matter. The does class seem, and brilliance. Does he, does he seem a 37-year-old? Not yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. Magnificent. Yeah. L'année magnifique. Speaking of which, Joaquin as well, 36 years Another old, turning it on. Brilliant prospective. player. All right, Magisterial Monday continues with Monday Night Soccer. Stick around after the locker room to see George DiMatellis and Gary Bailey give you extended highlights of the weekend's games and analysis of the key moments too. We've got Football Crazy Podcast, which is a fun look back at the weekend's games, stories about the top teams and everything you need to know about La Liga, Serie A, Ligue 1, the Premier League and MLS. It's hosted by Kevin Egan and me and produced by our social media whiz, Des Norris. Major League okay. Wrestling also coming to V in Sports, so make sure you stay with us for that on Friday, 8pm. You may have seen some of our fun promos here on the network and Thomas over here is lifting up some shirts. Tell I me. just want to wish Toronto tomorrow the first leg against Chief of Guadalajara some success. I'm go, 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 T.O. <laughs> you Your go. boy Chiovinko can make the difference. And, and if they win, let's do the Ariana dance. Let's do the Ariana dance. Jesus. Ariana dance. Ariana dance. Ariana dance. Oh, no, no. <laughs> You're going to do your hip in there. Take it easy, Ray. <laughs>